Hey everybody, it's Sean with the Good Dog, and we've got Mr. Rory over here. Hey Rory. Rory just came in. Um, Rory's a German Shepherd, young guy. A um, lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, a lot of nervousness, pretty high levels. Um, he's been like that since he was young, since the owners adopted him. Um, they had to carry him out of, out of the place where they adopted him because he was so shut down. Uh, his brother, on the other hand, was really comfortable and relaxed and in a good space. So somehow he ended up with some different stuff, either different experiences or some different genetics. Um, so he's really anxious, really nervous, uh, really fearful. And uh, they've done some work with him uh, prior. Um, but they haven't really seen the results they needed, so they just dropped him off, and uh, we've got two weeks with this guy. And uh, what I want to do is just demo or just show some of his behavior as he is right now, and then we can we can kind of see the process as we go towards working with him and see what's uh, what's possible with a guy like this. Also, to show everybody that it's not the training; um, it's actually just his fundamental state where he's at. So we're going to bring him out and just kind of put him in some different situations and see what we get from him, just to kind of document where he's at. And then we'll be able to document the process as we work through it and hopefully we'll see some really nice results and some really nice state of mind change. Um, these guys tend to be the most challenging. Um, anytime you have real serious kind of fear anxiety issues, they, they tend to take the longest and sometimes they top out as far as where you can go. So, but we don't know what we can get. Um, I'm always optimistic and hopeful that we're going to get some great stuff from this guy. So let's check it out. I'm going to put a long line on him and um, just kind of, you know, let him do a little bit of his thing, just so you guys can kind of see what he does. He's also got, you know, he's also had some problems with other dogs. Um, he's done some, you know, bite and grabs on some smaller dogs, and he's also been startled in the past with a, with a person coming around the corner that um, hasn't really done any, any damage, but that, that's the kind of level that the nerves are at for him, is that he can get freaked out and he can make some bad choices. You can see the flavor behind this is different. It's not about excited. It's not about. Sorry. Um, it's a. Uh, hopefully, you can see the flavor. It's not excitement. It's not gee whiz. I can't wait to get out there. It's uh, I need to get out of here. It's it's more freaked out kind of stuff. So I'm gonna bring him back and just so you can see it. Good for all you guys to kind of learn how to read. Like you can see him right now, I see like a bit of uncertainty, a little panic, you know, I, I bring him towards the crate, I'm not sure what to do, you know, I try to dive in there, very typical stuff for a, for a real nervous guy. So. As you can see, he's really unsure, you know, nervous about my approach. It's got, well, I've got the long line on him so I can, you know, actually get him and, and not have to chase him around. So let's take him around the front, see what we get, you see all this stuff. Once again, there's like this, this, this uh, intensity about getting through thresholds. It doesn't have the, ooh, let's walk through the threshold. It's got a panicky, let me get out of here kind of flavor to it. So all he's looking for is a way out. He's just looking for a way to escape, run away, escape the pressure of people he's not familiar with, and try and get somewhere where he thinks he'll feel more comfortable. So that's all that's happening right now, right? Just looking for ways out, which is really typical with nervous guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to work a nice slow program with him. We're going to do our typical stuff, um, eventually go to e-collar, and the e-collar should really help us get him past this escaping kind of uh, fleeing thing that's become a real habit for him. So a lot of times, you know, you hear me talk about like emotional habit patterns. That's what's going on here. It's like, yes, he's nervous and insecure, but 
the fleeing stuff has just become a default. I'm nervous, so I'm gonna run. I'm nervous, I'm gonna run. So what I wanna teach him is that when you're nervous, you can also learn to hang out and you're gonna be okay. Um, I'm gonna teach him that he can be a little more confident and still survive and still be all right no matter what's going on around him, that the sky isn't gonna fall, that he's gonna be okay. Now I'm gonna open the door again and just kinda let you see some of the, you know, most likely what we'll see, like intensity about just kind of escape. Right? You see the whole... So, once again, just a lot of uncertainty and... Uh, come on, let's train. Yeah. Nervous and strong. Just what we need, right? <laughs> so, but he's already better than he was. You know, just me doing this, just having the line on him and just kind of bringing him in and just kind of doing like some quiet work with him. He's a, he's a little better. If I would just leave the leash off of him and just let him go, he'd stay locked more. So he's already, it's kind of cool, he's already a little bit less panicky than he, than he would if, if I didn't have some information. His owners were doing something that a, a lot of owners do, which is um, trying to soothe him when he was nervous. So there'd be a lot of petting and a lot of it's okay and that kind of stuff, which is really common um, because you want to try and make the animal feel better, but it really reinforces and nurtures whatever state of mind that dog's in. So just by the fact that I'm not feeding any of that and I'm just kind of quietly controlling him, using a little bit more of an assertive quality with him, it makes him feel less, excuse me, less edgy, less frantic, less freaked out. So we're going to put him back. Just follow me in. And we'll just check it out and see what we get on the way back in. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. We'll go. We'll get out of your way. That's Roy. Like I said, not the worst guy we've seen in the fear anxiety department, but definitely a pretty high level of anxiety stuff and nervousness and, and fear stuff going on. So it's going to be a good challenge. So stick with us. We'll, we'll keep you updated. So this is Sean the Good Dog. That's Roy. We'll see you guys soon. Hey everybody, it's Sean with the Good Dog, and we've got Mr. Roy right there. Roy, also known as the Nervous Shepherd. Um, Roy came to us just over a week ago. He's got, I think Laura said, eight days in, and so he's probably got about six, seven days left. Six days? Um, sorry, math's not my strong point. Uh, so you've seen Roy's um, initial video where he came in, <coughs> excuse me, where he came in, and all he was trying to do was run away from me. I had him on a long line, just trying to flee. Uh, this, this video should be connected with the other video, so you should be seeing that. Um, running away, ton of nervous behavior, um, just scurrying, trying to get out of the yard, trying to get through the fence um, in the backyard with me, trying to just get away from me. Every time I'd walk, he'd, he'd flee. Um, on the walks, we had uh, 
lots of nervous reactivity towards other dogs and people, some jumping, <laughs> some stuff like that. A lot of just like this kind of stuff, constant, you know, because he's, he's hyper agitated, stimulated, and freaked out. So everything he hears is, you know, he's, he's right on edge. So everything he hears is, is causing this kind of stuff. So we've got him, if you take a quick look over there, we've got like, you know, a much milder thing. He's still like, he's only eight days in. So he's still got a long ways to go. You don't make fear and anxiety, stuff like this go away in eight days. But what we've done is start to create some new habits, which are, like I said in the, in the earlier video with him, or the, the first half of this, just creating the habit of, I don't listen to the anxiety. Uh, my anxiety and fear aren't the default. I don't just run. I don't just hide. I, I don't just constantly react. I can actually think, I can process, and I can make a decision. So that's what we're getting him to the point of, is actually starting to practice a little impulse control, have something that goes on that might cause a, a feeling, and then be able to process, think about it without just reacting with the default of, fl of fleeing or barking or growling and uh, just cultivating a whole new set of habits to his environment, um, building some confidence. He's never really been held accountable. He's never been told he has to be somewhere um, in a way that he really gets that will help him grow and move through it. So now, like by just having him in place is really powerful stuff that he can't just run away when he's, you know, if I walk towards him, you know, that he has to just hang out, you know, just that is powerful for him because without this place command and being reinforced with the e-collar, he would, he would just listen to his, his default, which is I'm out of here. When Sean walks over to me, I'm uncomfortable. I'm just going to get out of here. So if we never get him past that, he stays locked in that place. So every time I'm uncomfortable, I just hit the road and get out of there. Now we're teaching him that Okay, Sean comes up next to me. I'm mildly uncomfortable, but I've told, been told I can't take off. I can handle this. I'm, that's not so bad. Hey, wow, he's right next to me. Nothing bad's happening. So this is how we move him through the process of realizing this is really okay. Um, but we really have to build that first. You can't. You can't just teach him I'm okay. I can't just like give him treats and, and tell him I'm okay. I, I have to break through that whole psychological haze that he's been in. And uh, this is the approach that we use to get him there. So just so you know, the standard stuff you hear us talk about, leadership, structure, rules, guidance, and, and a lot of duration work, just having him hang in one spot and, um, and then just have the world go on around him is really helping him get to a better space. So I'm going to bounce him around a little bit, then we're going to take him on a quick walk. And <clears throat> like I said, he's nowhere near perfect, but I just want to show you the progress in eight days, which is pretty substantial. We're, we're pretty proud of him. So I've got the, uh, the mini educator with me. And uh, I'll be using it because he's nervous, because he's early in the process, and because he's highly anxious, I might have to use this to, to remind him if he gets locked up or confused or decides to take off. Rory, come. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Place. Down. Down. Right, so you can see, like, comes running by. And then he comes over your place and then he's like... So you can see like his default is f being freaked out and locked up. And we're just stripping it away and reducing the volume on that. So when he came in he was maybe at a 10 with that stuff. Now he's at, that's like a 4. And that he can process that quickly and go to that point is maybe even better than a 4. That he can be, you know, in the situation there's dogs here, people here that he's not super familiar with and then he can move to that relaxed place that quick. It's super phenomenal. So I'm just going to keep bouncing around. I'm going to stop yakking so much. Rory, come. Come on, buddy. Place. Good. Down. And I like to use the down command on place. I've been using it more and more for, for just about every dog. But with dogs with high levels of anxiety and fleeing stuff, man, that giving them that extra bit of information of laying down takes them from place and this to place and you saw him over there like instantaneously he went to place and went just relax I didn't do anything to make him relax except that I patterned him over and over again go to place and lay down go to place and lay down so he goes to place and he's like I don't go to place and contemplate I go to place and I relax so pretty cool stuff so give him the extra down if you've got a dog like this you're working with give him that down on top of place and you'll help him move more quickly to a more relaxed place Roy, 
Rory, come. Come on, bud. Down. 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 So two corrections on the e-collar. Um, one, I gave him a command there for down, and he kind of got locked up and just stuck. And then this, uh, as he was going through the process, he kind of like got stuck again. So in a lot of ways, the e-collar isn't so much correcting. It's really helping him. He's locked up. I'm frozen. I don't know what to do. Boom, stimulation. Oh, right, I'm supposed to do this. It can really help dogs relax and move through mental lockup, physical lockup. Um, oftentimes, the dogs that are stressed out, whether it's on the walk, you know, looking at dogs and people, I'll think of it as more of a relaxation button, which is really odd for people because their association with the e-collars are that they're painful and, you know, punishing. But I'll watch dogs that are really nervous, look at something, I'll correct them, and they go from this to back to this. Not, <gasps> they go from intense and worried to relaxed. So for me, I like to think of it as a relaxation a relaxation button. It can be a corrective tool, um, it can be guidance and it can be motivating, but it can also be relaxing when a dog is stuck somewhere to help them move to another place. So a lot of really cool stuff going on and some different ways to think about the tool. Let's check them out on the, on the grass. I don't know what it's going to be like out here. I'm going to have a little bit of work. Rory, come. 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 Down. So you see the nervous reaction right there? Down. Down. So what you saw right there was the training patterning starting to override the anxiety patterning that he's got previously. So he came over here. He got nervous about me for whatever reason. I didn't do it. I didn't change. But he got nervous. Old Rory would have been gone, and then he was like, oh, 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 what do I do? Gave him the command, reinforced it, had him lay down. So you're getting to see, you're getting to see like right before your very eyes, excuse me, training patterning starting to override old, old default psychological patterning or defaults. Nope. He's so, so, so used to just listening to his initial impulse of, I'm freaking out. You saw that right there. You saw me moving. I just want to go this way because our gate to his crate, to where he can hide out, is back there. So you saw in the initial video with him trying to take off through, through that gate, um, into his crate, through doorways, any, any spot that's a, a, an access point to, to escape. That's, that's what you see a lot of. And he's done it for so long that it's really deeply patterned. So he saw me walk by and he's like, oh, I just got to get out of here. He didn't want to follow me. It wasn't that he wanted to go hang out with me. He just wants to get away and he knows that that's an escape route. Great. So one reminder with the e-collar, helping him make a different choice and reinforcing that pattern that, oh yeah, Sean's moving over here and he's going to open that gate, which leads to my crate. But I'm actually going to make a different choice. I'm going to restrain myself, use, utilize some impulse control, and keep myself in the spot. Roy, come. Come on, bud. Good boy. Oh, Roy, come. Come on, bud. So now we're going to get him out on a walk. We're going to check it out. Uh, we're going to let Laura Morgan recreate her, her famous uh, walk of, of 1785. With, uh, with Mr. Rory and uh, see if things look much improved from where we were at before. We're going to be using the e-collar for, um, for keeping them in a heel. We'll have a prong collar on as well. It's for a little backup guidance, but I want to check it out and see what we get. So, let's see. so he's looking, looking much better. It's in a nice heel. You're not having to use much leash. So you're just using the e-collar just to reinforce with heel? Yep. So mainly what I want everybody to check out is just, just the, the nervous energy level is so much reduced. I mean, it's great that he's in a heel, you know, it's great he's not pulling on the leash, I'm sure Laura appreciates that. Um, but what's really awesome is just that he's so much more relaxed.
so much of that jumpy stuff is, is just evaporated. Guys, just like stop right here and sit. Sit. Good. Hang tight. Our best dude over here, behind the wall. So last time we were here, we had some pretty good like explosion and like jumping around. <laughs> nice. Nice how he looks to you for what do I do next? Rather than just exploding. Awesome. So why don't you guys walk towards me? You stop right there and sit. You can see he's still he's still nervous, but rather than just exploding and listening to the nervousness, he's he's actually controlling himself and making different decisions. Super awesome to watch. Let's uh, let's walk up a little bit. That looks great.